We've all been there. September 1st, elated, excited, determined that this year will be your year. Then barely one month away and we're dejected, we're burnt out, we're exhausted, stressed, falling behind and that back to school burst of motivation genuinely seems eons away. To be truly productive I really think we need to enjoy what we're doing and be mindful and intentional about those actions and that is why staying motivated is important. I feel the best of myself when I'm motivated, I find that my mental health is at its best, I feel that my self-esteem is at its best and so today I'm going to be talking you through some ways to sustain long-term motivation. This could be applied for back to school but also for any area of your life where you want to keep up the initial burst of motivation which comes with starting something new, with starting a new project, how can you go about doing things sustainably. This video is also very kindly sponsored by Adobe Creative Cloud and I've used Adobe Creative Cloud, Adobe Illustrator to create the printable which goes along with this video. Adobe Creative Cloud includes over 20 apps. This includes Photoshop which is of course their most famous one. Illustrator is the one that I personally use most often and the reason that I got my subscription. I've been using Adobe Illustrator on and off for years to create printables and products for my website. Just to point out though I don't always create them myself. For the bigger products I often work with a designer who creates them on Adobe Illustrator which also that means that I can make edits. So this here is the printable that I am making today. First of all I will make a plan. I just do this on paper and scribble down everything I want to include in it and then also make a very rough sketch of what I want it to look like. Then I tend to use the illustrator file of the academic planner as a guide when making a new printable so I can copy in designs and make everything more coherent with the stationery I already sell. There are so many cool things that you can do with Illustrator and I'm constantly finding new things. So today, whilst I was making this, I realized that you can make your own color swatches. You can create these palettes of colors so you can easily find the colors that you use most often. So I made a custom color palette with swatches for all of the brand colors of Pumpkin Productivity so I could easily find them, which was so, so useful. So this is me actually creating the design on Illustrator. I tend to use the desktop version. Creative Cloud also syncs between devices. So if you wanted to make edits on a tablet or your phone for example you can easily access the file and then make those edits and then it will sync back to your computer illustrator can also be used to make your school assignments more creative if you wanted to do something interesting and cool with it which actually side note just in terms of motivation i often find with school projects that spending an extra 10 minutes on it or spending an extra half an hour on a project is what makes the massive difference. Like in the final half an hour, that's where you'll see the nuance, that's where you'll see the real creativity coming through. I usually recommend spending just like an extra 10 minutes on it, just a little bit longer than you otherwise would because that's where, um, that's where, not to sound dramatic, but that's where the magic happens with it. Um, and I think that's where it goes from being a good presentation or like a good, good submission to a great submission. So for example, you could use Illustrator to create a poster, but also a presentation or a handout. And Adobe Creative Cloud also has an incredible student discount. Like I genuinely thought I'd misread it when I was signing up for mine. If you're a student or a teacher, you can get 65% off Adobe Creative Cloud. And that isn't like a, dis that isn't a single thing which is just for this video or anything. That's just their general offer, their standing offer so that students can be more creative, um, so that it can be used to enhance education. They have made Creative Cloud way more affordable for students. And they also offer a seven day free trial. If you're interested in signing up, giving it a go, then you can scan this QR code or you can click on the link in the description box to sign up. And without further ado, let's get into the actual video. All right, so first of all, what is motivation and why is it important? We often see motivation as a quick fix. It's a feeling, something which spurs us on to do something, it gets us excited, it's that wonderful energising feeling. They often don't last a very long time but they um, can also encourage you to actually sit down and get working and get started on a project, which is why they're really important because the act of actually sitting down and getting started with something is definitely the hardest bit and I always think about it a little bit in terms of activation energy in chemistry. So in a chemical reaction, activation energy is the minimum energy which particles need in order to combine in a chemical reaction and I think about starting a task in the same way. So if you have to start a task, you need to get over that activation energy which is what requires the most work, the most energy, but when you get over that, it's slightly more plain sailing. In chemistry, then you've got catalysts, which lower the activation energy. And so in this analogy, it would make it easier for you to get started with work. And so if you're motivated, it should be easier for you to get started with work, which is why I would say it's important. Now we can't feel motivated all of the time. It's not a feeling I think we can always feel, but I do believe that we can increase the number of times that we feel motivated and increase the number of spurts that we get and also make these periods of motivation last for longer. So they're still temporary and they're 
still short lived but less so than they otherwise would be which is what we're going to be talking about in the first half of this video and then in the second half of this video I want to talk to you about what I call the motivation cycle which is all about sustainable long term motivation and creating a system which just is self perpetuating. I believe that there is nothing more powerful than language. The great semantic philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, who incidentally is actually my favourite philosopher, said, if we spoke a different language, we would perceive a somewhat different world. The language that we have, the language that we use, the, la the way that we understand the words that we use, affects the way that we see the world. Saussure, the French philosopher who introduced uh, structuralism, which is a very influential mode of thought, similarly says, without language, thought is a vague, uncharted nebula. So language is powerful, and they're also powerful uh, when we use them to talk about ourselves. So if I say, I am lazy, I am unproductive, I'm a procrastinator, I'm going to fail, I'm um, not supposed to be here, like all of these emotions, all of these words are negative, and we see them as negative, and um, thus we start to kind of, we start to see ourselves as that, and it becomes self-fulfilling, um, and we use that language to strengthen these thoughts. That's what's kind of charting this nebula. We have to be using positive language. Instead of saying, I am unproductive, say I am productive, um, and let yourself believe that, use that language. Language shapes and changes the way we see the world, so don't underestimate the power that language can have. So I'm now actually going to walk you through some quick tangible things that you can do, and these are all on the printable. Number one, create affirmations. These are basically things that you tell yourself and should try and repeat on a daily basis or regularly. The best way to take this form is I am, uh, kind of using that very solid verb to be, I am, I am this thing. It's something you're speaking it into existence again, as it were. So um, I'd encourage you to just write out three of these. I am X, I am X, I am a hard worker. I am someone who enjoys studying. You're speaking this into being a part of your identity. The second thing which I'd recommend is writing out your perfect day. What things do you do on your perfect day? You could also write the things that you do in your perfect study session. This is kind of about romanticizing your life, I suppose. Think about the things that you enjoy about studying. Uh, you know, what things would you be studying? How would you be studying? Where would you be studying? But also on the flip side, getting more in touch with your priorities and seeing what's important to you and what things you really need to be incorporating into your day so that you are feeling happy, motivated, and um, kind of you're not suppressing any part of yourself. Number three, use positivity and back to school motivation as an advantage. Write goals and aspirations for the future when you are feeling motivated. I used to do this when I was feeling unmotivated, honestly, um, because I'd be like, oh, this will get me motivated, this will get me excited. But actually you end up not being as ambitious, you end up not being as excited, um, and the uh, your goals don't have the same vibrancy. Uh, your writing doesn't have the same vibrancy when you read it back. So write them when you're feeling motivated, read back over them when you're not feeling motivated. All right, so we're often told that there are two forms of motivation. We have got positive and negative. Positive is well, rewards-based motivation, so we're, we're rewarded for doing something right, and then that encourages us, us to keep on going. And then negative emotion is punishment, uh, where we're punished for doing something uh, wrong, and this is supposed to motivate us and make us more ambitious. Most studies show that this is not a very good idea. This is probably not what you should be going for, and uh, things like, you know, positive affirmation is much more sustainable. But as ever, when I'm talking about rewards, please be mindful of them, because they can be very debilitating if you're using rewards as the only basis for you to be working. Um, the main goal should always be enjoying the task as it is. I think there's a difference between rewards as like a physical thing or like rewarding yourself for having a study session and the reward being the work itself um and this one i think is really really valuable and very important if you can look back over the work and be proud of the work and actually have the reward related to the work itself and have it as more of a mindset thing i think that's a sustainable way to use positive motivation and i'm going to talk through some tips on um practically bringing this into practice now so in his wonderful book, The Motivation Myth, Jeff Hayden says, success leads to motivation, leads to success, leads to more motivation. This is basically saying that when we are successful, when we get things done, when we su succeed at something that we put our efforts into, we are going to be more motivated. It's going to spur us on, it's going to encourage us. And it then becomes a cycle um, because the more motivated you are, the more successful you are, the more successful you are, the more motivated you are, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's about momentum and gaining momentum. We lose motivation when we stop succeeding, when we stop seeing growth. And so we need to encourage ourselves to keep on moving and growing, doing new things, um, not 
standing still because um, that's uh, that's when we'll lose the motivation. And this is why it's so important as well to find success and joy and fulfillment in the process of succeeding um, because we're not going to get our dream job every day. We're not going to publish a book every day. We're not going to achieve a degree every day. Success is the culmination of many smaller successes and so I think it's important to celebrate those small successes and acknowledge those small successes which will give us the motivation to ultimately get to the big big final goal but actually that goal isn't important it's a process and we need to appreciate that it's a process um so yes here are some tangible tips on how to do that things that you could possibly implement into your own life if you are trying to sustain this motivation number one break bigger tasks into smaller tasks to make it more manageable this should increase your motivation because you have lots of small successes which you can tick off to keep you going and visually show that you are making progress because if you're working on one task for the whole day or one task for a couple of weeks it's possible that you might otherwise get burnt out because burnout arises when you feel like you're working really hard but you're not seeing any progress number two reflect on your accomplishments at the end of every day for example you might write down the top three things that you accomplished you might even write them down as you're doing them and i like to at the end of the week and the end of the month reflect on a few bigger things that i managed to get done that week Number three, set a big goal every week. It's really easy to get caught up with small daily tasks, especially when we have so many urgent things which need our attention. And so it can be a good idea to make sure that you're doing something proactive, um, something non-urgent every week. By making time for something big that you don't have to do, you should start to see progress. And this could be anything. At school, this might be making all of your revision resources for one of your subjects, or writing an extra philosophy essay, or reading that extra book for English. These proactive tasks will make you feel much more motivated because you can actually see yourself getting things done and moving towards your goal as opposed to just doing what you have to do. So this is also why end of topic tests are important. Again, think back to that success leads to motivation, leads to success, leads to motivation. If you succeed in these tests, you're more likely to be motivated. You begin to tell yourself that you're the kind of person who can do well in these tests. Um, and that positive mindset should hopefully help you to keep that up. And also you should be more motivated when bigger tasks come around because you already have all of the revision materials and so it's more manageable. Number five, not falling behind is key. And my key advice for this is if you fall behind on a couple of tasks, if you fall behind in one of your subjects, I would recommend prioritizing the most recent ones as opposed to the ones from a few weeks ago, provided that you don't have set deadlines and you're being chased up for them. Um, because you'll feel more on top of things and more prepared for your classes. The important thing is not to panic, don't beat yourself up, just come up with a plan of action. Make a note that you will get this thing done in half term or write this essay over the holidays when you know that you'll have the time to. And if you put it in your calendar, you can move on because you've accounted for it and you have a plan in place and then you can focus on getting ahead and doing the current tasks to the best of your ability and start feeling, I guess, successful and motivated again, like you do at the beginning of the year. And just another sub part of that is to do your tasks in plenty of time and aim to do your homework on the night it is set, if you can, which I know not everyone can. Number six, keep organized and do a big reset every week. So um, I'll include a link to the weekly reset to-do list in the description box. Um, this will make you feel more on top of things going into the new week, which is what we love about the beginning of school. You know, that feeling of newness, that feeling of excitement. And if you can do a weekly reset every week, you should feel more motivated every single week when you go back on Monday. Another top tip is not to let your brain get too cluttered and it probably will as the school year proceeds and there are just more and more things which you need to pay attention to. So um, just try and make sure that you keep you prioritise keeping your mind decluttered. So the way I do this is through journaling or morning pages. My top tip for this is keeping a brain dump. I keep a to-do list on my desk for odd tasks so that I don't have to think about them because when tasks come in, I usually would get distracted by them and feel like I had to do them immediately. They'd be on my mind and I wouldn't be able to focus. But if you can write it down, you can move on from it and um, not have all of these odd tasks cluttering up your mind because you know, again, it's already accounted for. Number seven, keep a note of things that make you motivated. And then you can look back to this when you need a short, term boost of motivation. Um, I've put some ideas on there which you can just kind of rank. Number eight, try and enjoy the process of studying. Uh, romanticize your studies, romanticize your education, uh, romanticize work in whatever way you can. I am a huge believer in mindset and language as I say dictating kind of the way that we then see the world and so if you convince yourself that you enjoy something um, then hopefully you will start to enjoy it more so one key part of this is having a studies phase that you enjoy being in having 
playlists set up, maybe having study groups with friends. The real goal here is turning work into play because if you see your work as play, then you will have a lot less resistance to it. Studies show that you tend to actually get more done if you see it as play and um, you tend to be more successful in that area. So I think this should be our number one priority, honestly. Number nine, don't get burnt out. Again, a very self-explanatory one. I'm sure nobody goes into the academic year hoping to get burnt out. But basically what I'm getting at here is make sure that you're looking after yourself. Because if you get burnt out, then you're not going to feel motivated at all. And the way to avoid burnout, the way to um, stay motivated is to make sure that you are like consistently taking care of yourself and making sure that you're keeping your mental health in check. And then finally, number 10, but if you can get ahead of your work, um, especially at university, then it can help you to feel more motivated and just on top of things and more organized. And, and that's a good thing to do before term starts. If you can get a week ahead of, your, ahead of your work before term starts, then you should be on top of everything much more for the rest of the term. If you do it from week one you're more likely to stay ahead because you start to tell yourself as well that you're the kind of student who stays ahead again with these narratives that we tell ourselves anyway thank you so much for watching this video uh, thank you again to adobe creative cloud for sponsoring today's video i really hope you found it useful thank you so much for watching again and i hope that you have a productive week oh also reminder because i always remind i'm sorry to keep on reminding but academic planner is still on sale we don't have any left now we won't be restocking um so if you want to get one for the new academic year then uh, there'll be a link down below